for the all right recording is in progress um thought i'd highlight the things that uh, you know i thought we could deliver well on um so one of the things that they're looking for is they want a project that fosters partnerships and community development and something of course that was going to have impact on science and, and engineering research um so when i first read this uh every time i saw ci i thought continuous integration uh in this case, it's cyber infrastructure. Just uh, so they're looking for, for um, ideally something where they can actually produce some kind of national cyber uh, infrastructure ecosystem, where you have all these different packages that can somehow work together uh, across all the disciplines, pretty much in the, within the NSF. Um, they want something where you can actually. Uh, they want something where you perform outreach, and you need some kind of quantifiable targets, and and. Uh, ideally, they're interested in something that is not just good for perhaps scientists, something that could be a wider audience, either that's, uh, you know, just everyday citizens, amateur scientists, commercial use, whatever. Okay, so there, um, this is like a multi-directorate uh, initiative thing. So there's uh, all the different pieces of the NSF had, you know, little blurbs that they put up for things that they were interested in. Some, you know, some had different, different levels and, and et cetera. Again, I just picked out the things I thought were to be relevant for kind of my idea for uh, using PiSat here within the PiSat community. Um, biological sciences, they say they just want to collaborate with other people. So I assume something that, that makes data sharing and things like that uh, possible would be good with them. Uh, this, the computer folks are looking for something that, uh, that sustains discovery across all fields. So that one's they're looking for something very broad, which is good. The human resources and education, again, are looking for something on education. So a package that's easy to use, you know, something that they could share with their students, probably actually have direct projects. So Python is good here, being that it's open source, right? It's free for schools. There's a huge amount of um, online material for, you know, teenagers or even younger students to actually become active in Python. So I think we got something good here. Uh, chemistry folks are, are looking for something, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for experimental and computational data generation, analysis, and storage, as well as sharing and curation, uh, as well as archival quality data handling tools and repository development. So this is good for PySet. Uh, the Silva folks, again, are looking for something that's, that's good for data. That makes sense. Discovering, developing, accessing, sharing, understanding, using data. Uh, I know there's there's another slide on these programs, so there's there's a bunch. A uh, director for geosciences probably had the largest section of things that they were interested in, so they put a lot of their different topics, and it's one, right? I think that's easy for us to to uh, apply to because uh, you know I think it directly includes us plus other scientists like us, right? So uh, particularly like uh, scientists looking at the ground or looking at the ground in the polar regions, whereas you know our polar scientists is atmospheric polar. You know, they got ground, ocean, but they're going to have a lot of data sets and approaches that are going to be similar to us. So I think this this is a, a good group, and they had a lot lot of things. Um, math and physical sciences. They just um, I actually don't think they invested a lot of effort in this one. They just listed the things that they're doing and said do something with relation to that. Um, so I don't know if that just means that they're very open or or what. Um, the social folks were kind of interested in a, in a project that actually worked across more than one domain, perhaps more than anything. Uh, and then perhaps maybe they don't have the same reliance on, on data that we may be looking at. Okay, so what are, what's the funding options? Um, the rewards were arranged for frameworks. So there's two classes, there's frameworks and there's something else. My idea is to go after the framework, which is the, the bigger pot of money. Uh, and that can be up to two, uh, from 200,000 to a million dollars a year from three to five years. Um, they do want something that is exceptional, exceptional in terms of scientific impact if you're on the higher range, but I mean, they always want something good anyway. Um, so ideally, I would like to be, you know, fill out a thing so we could get up to a million dollars a year for five years. I mean, go for the thing. Um, a question I know Aaron is on here, uh, so hopefully he can help out here. Um, it says these are the list of groups that uh, the NSF say, uh, says can uh, apply to this. Um, I'm actually leaving UTD. My last day is coming up here is August 31st, and I'm starting my own business. Um, so it's actually a sole proprietorship, which is basically just like a legal extension of myself. As far as I know, looking at the federal rules, um, 
I can actually apply to general grant things using a 10% de minimis overhead rate, which I think would be consistent with the type of budget they're looking for. Um, but the NSF limited it says it has to be like nonprofit, non-academic organization. I'm not exactly sure as a sole proprietorship if that includes me or not. Um, so that uh, so that's kind of a, a basic question that I have. I can put together a budget that's going to look just like it would be if I was at a university or any other research center where it's you know salary, fringe, um, equipment, travel, and then overhead of 10% on all of that except for equipment. So um, that's something I'm going to have to sort out perhaps before I can really go too far on this. I don't maybe I'd contact the NSF program head or hey, that's too high, but somebody over there to see if this is something that would work. Okay, so that's all setup stuff, kind of boring. Um, what is the idea that I've kind of been working with is, well, of course, I'm, I'm the you know, lead developer for, for, for PySAT, so it starts out with PySAT. But reading through the whole thing, it looks like they want to be able to create some kind of national infrastructure from all the different packages that exist. And all those, pretty much most of those packages haven't been developed with the idea of, oh, we're going to be integrated into some cohesive na national in infrastructure. So the idea is to make PySAT into a framework for supporting an integrated community of tools, you know, via single interface from pre-existing communities that already have, you know, a scattershot of tools. So the idea is that, uh, you know, PySAT is useful for any type of data, not just space science. And given the design of PySAT, it can connect all these different, connect to all these different packages. And once something is actually connected to PySAT, then it is connected to everything that's connected to PySAT. Um, so uh, we could use like PyHC as the first community to develop this type of integration. So, you know, kind of like a first pass, probably some work on PySAT itself to support this integration that we, uh, you know, the things that we identify we need to do. And then we apply it here to PyHC. So I'm gonna have some more stuff on what I mean by that, but we connect everything together, um, you know, at least with one connection to PySAT itself. And then we're gonna learn from that process, right? The ideas that we think may be good, may, may not be so good. You know, things that we didn't think of may pop up and be great. So we take those, all those things that we learn and then we apply it to another section of, of you know, the NSF community, probably one of those, you know, ground-based or other scientist community, or depending on what we can work out to, you know, even broader. So the idea is we generalize PySAT and associated packages within PyHC to enable a consistent interface to all program-specific tools across the national community. Uh, so... <clears throat> Oh, I actually have to do, sorry. Let's see if this, is this still sharing or is it showing? Yeah. All right. So uh, PySAT 2, everything used to be in PySAT itself. And it was like this big monolithic thing. You had all these different instruments in there and all kinds of write of analysis code. You had like PySAT itself, which put, put it all together. And that was just like too much for a single package. And it didn't really convey the, you know, the idea that we had for PySAT. So PySAT 3, um, which has just recently been released, breaks all that stuff out into a, a full community. So all the individual instrument supports have been have pushed off into their own package. So like up here at the top, we have PySAT models. Here we have support for a variety of different models. So this is like a plugin architecture. P PySAT is the thing that has the interface, but it doesn't know directly how to work with instruments. These packages over here know how to work with instruments. And then you can just say, hey, PySAT, I've got this package. It's got instruments. I want to use it. Uh, and it's, it's grouped like by data source because NASA itself collects all of its data, you know, via SPDF and presents it on CETA web. So there's a, you know, consistent methodology for getting at NASA data. So right if for all the NASA instruments, there's common functions and things like that. So we built functions in PySAT and NASA to go to the right place to download the data. We have generalized loading, you know, all the things you actually need for, for NASA instrument. All those things are collected over here in PySAT. NASA uh, got PySAT CDAC. This is the same thing, right? It's all the methods to get to CDAC data. In this case, this is like the Cosmic One uh, GPS constellation. So all the level one and level two data is available here. PySAT Madrigal, again, the same thing. Madrigal has released its own set of tools for interfacing with Madrigal data. So PySAT Madrigal uses those tools to develop, you know, the download routines and all of that. So again, here PySAT Madrigal is generalized access to Madrigal data via the PySAT interface. Uh, PySAT space weather is a collection of space weather indices. Um, so we could, you know, do packages like this for all kinds of different uh, scientific domains. 
And while these are specific data sources, we can also have just packages, right? We could potentially hook PySat up to SunPy, uh, to uh, HelioPy, to SpacePy, AmGeo. I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of stuff because this, this is not the slide where I listed those, but this is the same kind of ideas. We can connect all the different packages together. So on this, this half over here, if my highlighting works, these are like data source plugins. Over here is um, there's a new one, PySat missions. So this is, you know, uh, predicting orbits and all kinds of tools for flying a satellite through a model or processing data that's coming down from an active mission. PySat seasons, it's an analysis tool, uh, bin average maps, all kinds of stuff like that, right? Uh, Asher's talked some about Komodo. So Komodo is just hooked up to PySat. And as Asher put it, with PySat, you don't have to know the data. You just learn the class to get to the data. And Komodo is all about just, you know, give me the stuff. So those two things have already kind of been blended together, at least for one dimensional data. Uh, and then tutorials, PySat tutorials are trying to, you know, provide a place to, to, so people know what's going on and incubators where we're developing stuff. So I, the idea is just to do this, but now applied to PyHC where we connect all the different packages within PyHC to PySat. Like I, we were just talking with uh, Liam Kilcommons the other day. He's um, Geospace Pi Lite. Sorry if I got that wrong, Liam. Uh, it's not in front of me. But it has like transformation. We've been looking for an, uh, an ECI to ECEF transformation for a while. It's in AstroPy, but AstroPy is like this, you know, big, huge thing. Um, it turns out Liam's got the code that we're looking for, so we're probably going to be integrating his code into here. PySat Missions also uses like OMMBV package. That's the basis vectors for magnetic fields. Um, so all these packages, there's a lot of areas for us to actually integrate all our different tool sets together with, you know, some functional purpose in mind. Uh, like, yeah, these are used packages. Uh, so the general community challenge not just, is basically the same challenge that we face here in, in PyHC. Um, we've got a variety of data sources and data formats. I'm sure that's true in any field. Um, we were going to have a variety. We do have a variety of legacy tools, right? I mean, all the code that was written in the 70s and 80s, maybe 90s, uh, that's all in Fortran, right? Now we're moving into Python. Good thing Python's got good Fortran code coupling. But um, it's really beneficial to be able to use those legacy tools, but not be constrained by the fact that it was written in 1985 or something in Fortran 77, kind of, uh, and, and you know, all of that. So it's good to be able to benefit from these without having to modify them, but be able to, you know, use them within more modern where people are at now. And then of course we have current tools, um, you know, and everybody's got their, if somebody's building a package, they had some kind of strong feelings about functionality or a, a way to approach something, or they just, it was missing and it's, it's part of the expertise. So, you know, the people are, are developing packages for their own reasons, which is one of the great things about open source. Uh, but, you know, it may not be, oh, I'm going to develop this package so it works with everybody unless that's just the specific point of the package. So whatever solution we need for like a cohesive interface has to account for the fact that, you know, it's open source and people are just going to do what they are going to do. And you want to have a framework that benefits from that. You can't, you don't want to try to constrain that. You want to let that uh, keep going. And uh, as in, in PyC, we're, we're starting to, to, you know, we posting standards and, and we're talking to each other about what it means to be a package in PyHC. So, you know, stuff coming out of the community now is probably going to have, you know, better support for our notion of, of standards than, than the previous ones. So, and that's great, but we need these tool, those new tools that are, are in better support to still work with all the other ones that are, who knows. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of times there has not been historically a lot of support for software and, and science. So, and a lot of the software might be written by grad students or postdocs whose main output has to be like science papers and things like that. So I don't know if that unit, broad unit tests and things like that for all these packages are really the, the norm. Um, so it'd be good to, um, like with PySet, we have these analysis tools that work on the instrument object so it works for any data set. Well, those things we can actually test to have an open source package, you know, unit tests are there. You can have the Travis CR, the Git or uh, coveralls report, all that good stuff. So we can, you know, really make a, a difference in, in the robustness and reliability of the results that were coming out. Because most of the published data doesn't actually, you know, results don't, don't have a traceable or verified public code performance or things like that. And if as a community you want to say we're scientists, we're being honest, the data is what it is, the results are what it is. Uh, and we need to be able to show the full stack. Um, 
So yeah, so the kind of the community solution, making a community from, from PySat is that PySat is able to individually bridge to any package. That package in principle doesn't actually need to be modified for that to happen. And then if it's connected to PySat, now everything that else is connected to PySat now can actually you know, go and make use of those features. Uh, a number of the directors before said they wanted things to be easy to share data among groups and things like that. Um, so it's easy to load a new data set with PySat. Uh, particularly if you're using like a NetCDF4 that PySat itself made. Uh, so um, PySat makes the files for ICON using its public NetCDF4 export option, ICON, uh, the IBM ICON files. Um, so that has uh, all kinds of different formatting standards to go along with CETAWeb. Um, so PySat, you know, we've already uh, demonstrated we can make files easily that work well in like an archival kind of thing. And then if you're making a file that way, you can, it's easy to send it to somebody else and they just immediately load it to PySet. Uh, and PySet supports, you know, independent instrument, independent analysis tools and works on any data. Um, so it doesn't kind of matter what kind of data your community is working with. I think, you know, PySet and making a community would work. And then, you know, again, just to reiterate the first ideas, we do it here on PyXC, we distill all the results and then we expand and go out to other groups. Uh, so I spent most of the time, a lot, a good, well, some of the time thinking particularly, you know, what are the things that we're going to do for PySat itself? And one of the things is um, not, it is for PySat, but it's also broader for the community. And it was a topic that was uh, a few sessions back, I think, and that's time handling, right? We've, in science, we've got leap seconds because uh, there's, you know, trying to be accurate with respect to the earth and, and the broader cosmos, but places like Google and NumPy developers and everybody else, like they do not care about leap seconds. And then there's all these different solutions, I think, you know, uh, of uh, basically ignoring leap seconds, but still trying to maintain some kind of compatibility with POSIX. Um, and I, so I kind of think uh, this would be a good area for us to sort out because in our community, we have a package that's been developed that, that does have like leap second support, right? But I don't think anybody outside of PyEC is going to be using that. Uh, so this could be one area that if perhaps we spend some time, it could help uh, integrate us into the broader community and say, hey, you know, us space scientists, we have things to say about, you know, Python and, and things like that too. Um, and in terms of particular notes, PySat itself uses Pandas and X-Ray. Um, X-Ray, both of those are built on the Pandas daytime index thing. Those are, you know, there's no leap second support there. Um, so the traditional formats that, everybody else in the world is using doesn't have leap seconds. So if there's some kind of way we can sort that out or actually make that bridge nice and robust, that I think that could be a really good thing to do. Uh, this could be a difficult thing because I think there's already been a number of, of time solutions out there and everybody's doing their own thing. So it's like that XKCD comic, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a new standard that does everything. And now instead of having 14 standards, you got 15 standards, right? So, um, but this is, this could be a way to have you know, additional coupling to the broader community. Uh, for PySat itself, I'd like to generalize data support. Right now it works with Pandas and X-Array. Um, I really would like to get PySat working with NDCube, right, which I consider like a SunPy integration. NDCube has all those kind of transform, transformation um, and mapping features built in. Um, and so it's really good for imaging data, particularly for the sun, but I'm sure there's other groups that could use, you know, nice, nice translations and mapping and all of that, um, you know, like imaging and geoscience. Um, so the, the issue with ND cube is, um, again, it's going to come back down to that daytime index. As far as I know, ND cube does not right now support a daytime index. It supports the fancier time with leap seconds. So uh, we need some kind of uh, coupling there. Uh, I'd also like to add DASC, which is uh, like a multiprocessor version of, of Pandas. So that might, might be easy, but I'm just, it's a new data format. And I'd really just like to generalize the way PySat handles the format. So it's not, um, so if somebody comes along and a new format is out, they can easily couple it in. Uh, potentially, if we're going to be taking this to all kinds of fields right now, PySat kind of defaults to wanting to load by like a year and day of year or a date or a file name. Uh, I could think perhaps in biology, they don't load data like that. Maybe they load by slide number or really, I don't know. But I could just imagine that there are data sets that are not optimally described by just loading by date, which seems to work out pretty well for space science. 
in terms of a general package that if you're going to make it very broad, then you really need excellent testing. Um, you don't want a lot of technical debt in principle, right? Um, and you want to make sure as you're making changes that you're not impacting the performance. So we need a built-in performance tracking as part of like unit testing, uh, expand the testing. We already have like 97% coverage of PySat, um, but nevertheless, we're still running into bugs. So I have not found enough unit tests quite yet. Um, could improve the data export. Um, there's an internal feature about data caching that would help for, for um, performance. Right now, PySAC can on the fly iterate by orbit through, through data sets and the data set itself doesn't need like an orbit number. Basically it just on the fly can calculate a, a particular condition that occurs and then you know pagin paginate on it. Well, it doesn't just have to be orbits, it could be any kind of condition. So it'd be good to open that package up so people can iterate their data on the fly just through whatever arbitrary, arbitrary condition they can think of. And one of the things we're just starting on kind of now is developing a constellation uh, interface via PySAT. So right, instrument is a single data set, constellation, a bunch of different data sets. So it's a multi-data source interface uh, and we can do a lot there, but then we also have this idea of actually a constellation to instrument function. So you can like define a grouping of multiple data sets and then have PySAT just um, translate that to a single instrument and then really what would be nice is if that's an actual fully live object that you can go load data for other dates, times and stuff like that. And it would work completely like a, a, a full instrument object. So that's kind of the idea there. Um, and then there, there's, we could expand documentation. We already have a lot of documentation, but you know, if you're looking for a broader package, then it, it doesn't hurt to have more. Um, so I couldn't come up, you know, I'm not gonna tell other people what they do with their packages, but. Uh, uh, and then the, the NSF also wants some kind of sustained community outreach, some kind of, um, you know, metrics. But if, if we're going to say, hey, here's a package to make all your different communities into a community, we have to go out to those places and talk to them. And typically, you know, if you tell a scientist about a package once, it's not like they're going to run home, install it on their machine and, oh, I'm going to do all my work through this new package. I mean... Maybe other people are better salesmen, but you know, scientists typically have a workflow and they're going to be resistant to changing that immediately unless there's right, a, you know, a real sustained benefit that you can you can give to them. Um, so that that's going to take time, I think. So, you know, if this is a three-year or five year, I think there needs to be sustained presence in our field and in other fields going out to talk about what we're doing and, and solicit feedback and, and all of that. And and not just here in America, but you know, internationally. So Hopefully the pandemic actually continues to go down so such things you know, could be possible. Um, and then, you know, PySAS utilities and restricted scientists, the whole world has all kinds of data out there that's, in, you know, unformatted text files or differently formatted or, you know, just all kinds of mess. And any group you work with is gonna have their own different files and stuff like that. So I just imagine every business out there, every group of people, if they're working with data at all, they have this problem of, Got a bunch of different data sets and it's the real challenge to work with those things and anytime something changes with the data you know you got to go back and change all kinds of code and all you know so we really need something that's more robust to, to, to changes and things like that without making it a big deal um so i think you know PySAC could potentially scale to be you know like this national cyber infrastructure resource to to bring everything together into to one package while not actually imposing any requirements on the sub packages that go on to make that. So, yeah, that's the idea. That's awesome. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Well, oh, good. That's the kind of response we need to go ask for $5 million. <laughs> So I know my lighting is terrible. But ask convince. Really. So can you can you tell me the definition of NSF for infrastructure? Generally, I don't think about software. I know there's software as infrastructure now these days. Um, for sure, I understand that. Um, mm. But you know, is there? Are they looking for another component? You know, for me, I think this alignment <clears throat> on the software side infrastructure is is yeah it's definitely needed um brief note again on the nd cube uh, uh I, I think a lot of those translation packages hopefully find themselves in the x-ray somehow mm. instead of instead of continuing with nd cube i know we got Stuart on the on the line here but we are endeavoring to do that right now 
Um, so just to be aware of those efforts as well. Oh. But yeah, just curious about the infrastructure um, thought as software and also the, the dependency that you may require yourself as a developer, you know, on PySat, how much reliance are you going to have on these other other packages? Are you, are you going to have to become an expert yourself in order to tie in? And I know you've probably done a lot of work on that, but just and again, yeah, it, it's a it's a big effort, five million dollars. So yeah, ho yeah. hopefully um, you get buy in from these other developers, other teams, whether it's Komodo or whatnot, to do more extensible things. But but yeah, sorry, just a, a sort of a, a rambling there. No, thank you. Uh, hopefully, I don't forget any any of the notes. Um, um, so, <laughs> oh man, they're already leaking out. I think um, <laughs> it's all good. So, yeah, I, wasn't they, very, all right. I wasn't very nice. <laughs> Thanks for the note about the X-ray and transformation. So that, that I, I didn't know. So I mean, that's just another note. You know, we're all doing stuff, and it, so that, that's good to hear because uh, I'd actually uh, um, talked about Danny Ryan before about doing this ND Cube integration, and it just ran out of time and all kinds of other stuff. So you know, even if this doesn't happen, it's good to hear it's getting into other packages. Um, yeah, in terms of of say moving to a different field or even within PyC, like if I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to connect PySat to SunPy. Um, I mean, it's possible I could do that on my own, particularly given my understanding that SunPy has got a lot of documentation and things like that. So if it's a documented package and all that in principle, I could, that's not how I'd want to approach it here. I'd want, you know, to get SunPy folks on board. So, you know, they're funded, we can have meetings and, and all that other stuff. Um, so I think part of the thing would just say is, hey, Within our community, we, we can actually integrate, uh, interact with these different packages to, to make it easier and help us build up, you know, perhaps a more robust tool set for, for general integrations. Um, I do have some experience with, with coupling other packages that way back in the day, I actually wrote a, a, a little program to couple IDL to MATLAB because I was using IDL at the time and, and I had all kinds of issues. I didn't like it and I was looking for something else. And a program I was, uh, working on was using machine learning tools in MATLAB and I just got tired of switching back and forth. So I actually wrote something to couple IDL to MATLAB so I could actually call MATLAB routines native and IDL, just like, and it would transparently transfer the data over, call the routine, get the result and pass it back to IDL. So um, I never released that because I, I was like, this is a bit of an abomination. I don't want to support IDL in this manner. But um, it kind of got me on the, I think, even if you have packages that on the surface don't have any explicit compatibility, there's usually a way to get them to talk to each other, at least one way. Mm -hmm. Now, one issue is, you know, uh, PySAT has got a certain set of features. Every other package has its other set of features. There might not always be like a one-to-one -one mapping between them, right? There might be some information I has that, that, that it has that PySAT doesn't capture or perhaps more problematically, PySAT might have some information that it can't be tra transferred. Um, but I think in that case, I, we might just keep some additional information on the instrument object itself. So when it goes out and then it comes back, we have the capability to remember. Nice. So you don't perhaps have that loss of information if you, you know, hop and then hop back. Understood. Um, hey, uh, one other quick thought um, too. I wonder, this is all done through PySat and I think that makes sense too, right? But I imagine there are some packages that aren't necessarily, you know, ideal to connecting to PySat. So I wonder if, you know, marketing this type of thing, right? If it's not like, hey, this is the heliophysics distribution. This is snakes on a plane distribution mm -hmm. packages. By the way, we got organized with a lot of these software packages through PySAT because mm -hmm. of reasons A, B, C. Yeah. Um, but in general, market it as more of a heliophysics oh, right. uh, software infrastructure rather than focusing on like, we're doing this all through PySAT, right. make it a little more broad, say of like, course. hey, we got these packages that really couple nicely to PySAT. We have these ones here, but we still like to keep organized. Maybe there are a couple of, you know, non-direct tie-ins here and there, mm -hmm. you know, as you start to think about like a, um, an architecture diagram for, for these types of couplings. So just, sure. just another thought there um, to okay. sort of brought, broaden its, uh, you know, um, language there because people are yeah. like, hey, why, why is it PySat? I, I, I never use satellite observations in any of my work. So sure. why am I going to? You know, anyway, it's just playing devil's advocate, but hopefully no, just trying to get a bigger, bigger audience for this type of, you know, buy-in. Um, yeah. But anyways, no, I, I think it's a great idea. You know, I'm sure. thinking like, I would love to have this sort of tie into sprints, um, you know, mm. type, of, yeah. type of deal. Um, and, and that would be a complete infrastructure in my mind. Yeah. Um, you have the this feeds into, Please this go feeds ahead, into the, uh, 
the, the, we, what I talked about, I guess it was last telecon, um, HDE has been doing these little uh, Python projects, but we're thinking of maybe doing an integrative thing. And one of the things we'd like to do is get the set of, at least the set of core developers and maybe the Europeans as well, uh, hopefully the Europeans as well. Uh, yes, Stuart's here, so we have at least one. And uh, but to to get a, just a brief, you know, maybe four hours in a couple of days. Um, Julie and I have talked about this, along with uh, Arno Masson from in Europe. This there's this ISWAT initiative, International Space Weather Teams. Um, so anyway, we're, what we're thinking of is having a, a fairly brief workshop where we get ideas like what, what we just heard and other people's ideas and try to uh, iron out what would make sense. Um, and maybe, maybe asking too much to do that in such a short time. Maybe, maybe you actually really need to have intimate understanding of all the different packages to understand what's going to be the best route. But this is something we're, we're thinking about and uh, trying to organize a, a brief get together with the relevant people working on these packages to um, see if we can get some general buy in. Um, and Russell has clearly a, a particular idea, which may well be the right idea. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, I definitely uh, require buy in. And to go back to Alex's point, I probably just. Um... Uh, didn't convey convey it um, as well as I had hoped, but the, the uh, it does need to be a very broad kind of inclusive thing for you know to work in this NSF thing and to get the other you know people in, in PiC in, in involved as well. And um, so while I did present it, you know perhaps because I'm PiSat centric in some ways, you know things connected to PiSat. I also had the idea is you know um, like HelioPi is going after you know data access and download and all that stuff too. There's no reason in principle, I don't think that HelioPi couldn't, you know, incorporate PySet as a data set or a data source too. So if people like the HelioPi data interface or whatever, then they could, you know, use that tool or AmGeo or right. PySpeed as. So, you know, it's, it's about ideally making all these tools available to people, but not necessarily saying this is the way you have to do right. it. Right, and this question yeah. of, and do you want to, for instance, have a data model unity rather than a specific mm. software and you know mm -hmm. high and so there's different different approaches to the to the general integration yeah um and there's always phrase between like a generalized package and a specific package right if you spend all your life in a particular area and there's a package written for that particular area it probably makes sense to yeah. spend your time there rather mm -hmm. but if somebody's more broader which you know is just different than you know a more general interface will make more sense to them. But uh, yeah. when it, when is this um, due or or what's October twenty eighth? No October step 20th. one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, there's will... some time. But yeah, we... yeah. There's a little. It's bit pretty of time. close. It's pretty close. We have but, to you know have yeah. to be getting on it. It's pretty big. Yeah. I wonder. You know, like pulling analogies, calling it Pan Helio or something like that to Pan Geo or some you know, and and really just diving in from that sort of high level sure. would, would set up people from NSF be like, oh yeah, I know what Pangeo is because I'm in the geosciences, right? Um, so there might be some quick yeah, that's the relationship kind of thing. things with them. Yeah, so I haven't had a, a chance to talk to her yet, but there's um, somebody I met via Python and stuff um, who's in the, the geosciences more ground side. Um, that I think could be a really good person to get on the project as well. So, and we could perhaps use her as, you know, the stepping stone into that other field, you know, like not the right word, but a knowledgeable tour guide type of thing, you know, help us get her, her feet settled and be active participant and all that, of course. Not, yeah. not Osti bot by any chance. Huh? Not Osti bot by any chance. Not Osti. Um, no, it's uh, um, Rebecca. Um, oh, as I'm always going to get her last name wrong. I'm going to have to look it up. Oh, oh um, you're from CCMC. She, she could be. Yeah, it's one of those. What's her last name? It uh, starts with an E. E. It's Molly. 
Okay, that's not who I was thinking of. Um, I first came across her from, from AGU talk. So like we have the, pipe, the snakes on a spaceship uh, paper and, and session. I think she uses snakes on a spacecraft or something like that. So mm -hmm. kind of came across it and, you know, like, hey, we're trying to do the same thing a little bit. And so she's had for multiple years been doing um, educational um well maybe well yeah educational type things like if you don't not using python here you can come here i'm going to give you overview and hear all the different tools and things like that so i think she's got good experience sharing this type of information and that would be you know beneficial in terms of just us getting it out there but you know if she has the uh, she knows about another field's packages pretty well then then that would be helpful on this you know bridging the gap or something like that Certainly the advertising aspect is something that's critical and which mm. we've fallen down on all the time. <laughs> we have a few few examples like the snakes on a spaceship and a few things like that, but it's got to be continual, as you say. I mean, right. you've got to overcome these workflows that, that are ingrained and people don't realize they could be five times more efficient because they're yeah. doing it the way they do it. Right. So in practice, I found it can be good to, to focus on graduate students is certainly if you could get them like in the first year or two, yeah, then, um, then they're not really established. And, and also if you can get like at least one grad student in an area to start working on it. And if they like it, you know, then they share it with, with their friends and the other people there. So, um, but yeah, to get that, you got to keep going out there. Yep. No, I, I think it's a great idea to get yeah this sort of infrastructure, software's infrastructure um, in place. So I'm I'm for it. Um, I you know like to see a component of of sort of sprints alongside it for a, a, a complete picture. You know, just being yeah. selfish. Um, of course, and you know, I I unfortunately can't be involved in NSF work uh, since they do only nonprofit. You know, I think it's really unfortunate that NSF does this. So unfortunately, I, I, I would just have to you know, watch and, and just take a community seat here and, and give feedback. Um, so I would love nothing more than to be involved on on this type of stuff. But because it's nonprofit, you know, they, they, they cut out that that part of the uh, heliophysics community, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I can actually do it, but <laughs> so I'll be checking on that. Right, right. I'm happy to help write, though. You know, I think right. it's um, so and organize. Um, but yeah, same. And I'm not a business, so I know I can help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, a couple of people who couple of the people who usually come to these things who aren't here today, unfortunately, but be interested in plasma pies, you and helio pie and mm -hmm. a couple of the others. But anyway, mm -hmm. we are we are thinking about this short workshop, maybe late in July or something like that, um, to try to get community buy-in into something. Okay, yeah. And, and the other thing is it's, it would feed, in our case, the HDE uh, route with perhaps a larger project within HDE. It wouldn't be five million for five years, but uh, it could be, you know, say 300K for three years or something like that. Mm -hmm. So at least, at least bigger than 75K for one year. <laughs> anyway. Lots of thoughts, lots of directions. You can try to integrate it and be good. Yeah, and I'll, I'll uh, I'm going to be talking with the PySat team as well. So uh, I've already had an initial discussion, a quick one, but you know, not enough to really go over any of this. But just because uh, a couple of the folks on the uh, normal core PySat team can't get NSF funds either, um, so. Um, so, so Jeff Cleansing is a core developer, but I don't think there's going to be, he's not going to be pursuing um, funding on this one because he has alternate means. Um, I definitely need support. Uh, I'd like to support Jonathan Smith, who's currently, well, he's, he's at NASA, but he's not NASA, right? One of those people, he's there, but not, not there or something. 
Yeah, he's not a civil servant. Yeah, he's not a civil servant, so it's not the mm -hmm. same restriction. Um, Angeline Burrell is at NRL, and I would definitely like to get her on there. Um, she's already started a little bit on the Constellation object, so I need her for that. Um, plus, she's really good for the outreach and the sustained travel. Um, so, and Angeline, she's been a core developer there, too. So, I heard at one point there is a way with enough paperwork or the right kind of paperwork to get NSF funds to flow to somebody like at NRL. Um, and whatever that takes is something I have to sort out what that is. So I could do that or try that. With, with NASA, there are these uh, cooperative you know, there are agreements that they're agency level agreements that allow you to do things like space weather across the, the divide that it's not easy. Mm. What if, like, just in, in principle, like, what if money came to me and then I subcontracted that to NRL? Is that still a no-no, or does going through an, an intermediate entity enough? No, I don't think an intermediate entity does it. No. If you, the, the problem is you can't give money back to the government. So you couldn't fund somebody at NASA, for example. Oh. Uh. You can't you can't offer a contract to the government. The government offers contracts to people. <laughs> okay, all right, I get it. Russell, by the way, I'm I'm meeting with uh, is it Angeline or Angeline? Angeline. Uh, Angeline. Uh, in in a little over a couple of weeks. So uh, if if you're interested, I'll throw you on the invite there. Oh yeah, please. We can make it a broader discussion here as the software infrastructure and sort of the collaboration infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, love to have you join in. Thanks. Yeah, so if we if we might have a, a meeting in July, so I'll you know iterate on the PySat side and you know fill out some more of the things, make it you know the language better, and start putting some pieces together for for more of a plan, right? Rather than just a notion, we'll start actually putting some smaller pieces in, and um, so. Um, We'll probably do that in a place that's accessible so other people can contribute or at least go and take a look. And then I'm guessing we'll probably write the proposal on Overleaf or something like that. Um, since I don't know about everybody else, but um, you know, that's accessible and in LaTeX. So yeah. Overleaf is the online LaTeX editor thing, right? Uh -huh. yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Cool. All right. And it's free to join for a normal yeah, it works pretty well. thing. So Okay. Well, yeah, if you're looking for extra eyes, feel free to invite me to that document. Okay. Where... Thank you. Will do. Once, once we have one. Hey, Russell, can you just chat your email into the chat there? I don't seem to have it in my yeah. Gmail. Thanks. I just do my new one. Cool. Oh, yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. Okay, well, I think that's probably it for me then. Um, so I'll just finish up again since we have a few more people that we have the snakes on a spaceship seed our Python session today. And it's starting at, oh, I get my calendar. <laughs> I don't want to tell you the wrong time. One o'clock mountain time, so three o'clock Eastern. Um, so <clears throat> that's free for everyone, of course, to seed our. You're welcome to attend. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would say that also, um, I'm also having a session at Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll be talking about software engineering. Uh, we're going to have uh, Rebecca Ringette from uh, talking about Komodo. We'll have uh, some Python and Fortran packaging uh, topics. So uh, it'll be, you know, a little bit more uh, engineering oriented, but uh, we will have Python uh, topics of interest to those connecting to models and things like that. Uh, that's again, that's Thursday, 1 to 3 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm going to be there, Michael. I've already registered. Oh, excellent. Awesome. Looking forward to hearing more about this as you get more put together, Russell. Um, well, I do not, yeah, I don't have anything else to discuss. So unless someone wants to bring something else up, we can go ahead and wrap up. Cool. 
Well, then we'll wrap up. <laughs> nice seeing you all. Have a great rest of your Monday. Thanks, Julie. See you guys. Bye. Likewise.